We're here today with Mark Layton, the author of Agile Project Management for Dummies. Mark, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Michelle. So the first question we had for you is, can you tell us what is Scrum and what is Agile? Absolutely. Scrum is a, uh, a framework that many organizations use to expose to the organization whether the methodology they are using for product development is working for them or not. Um, it's one of many frameworks that are underneath the Agile umbrella, uh, which is when people talk about agility, it really is a descriptor. You know, many people feel that uh, Agile is a particular thing, right? Uh, we're doing Agile. Uh, but the truth is, Agile is a, a descriptor the way that Warm is a descriptor. Um, I can have warm soup. I can have warm tea. It can be a warm day. Um, you know, all of those things are fundamentally different, right? But they share common characteristics. And when we talk about the umbrella of agility, uh, we're talking about dozens of methodologies that all share common characteristics. And those characteristics are, how well does that methodology align to the values of the Agile Manifesto and to the 12 operating principles of agility? Your book, Agile Project Management for Dummies, how is it different than other books about Agile? Well, the Agile Project Management for uh, Dummies book is really a field guide. It's a field guide for practitioners, people who are in the trenches actually doing the work. You know, there are a lot of books on Agile, um, a lot of books that uh, intellectually look at the theoretical constructs of collaboration or motivation or, you know, all of these things that we sort of bring into it. That isn't what my book is. My book is the people who are doing the work, uh, who need a reference that says, I'm trying to do this, how exactly do I do it? So for those who are looking for an in the trenches field guide, this is the right book for you. Mark, we know that Agile is being used by more and more companies and organizations for software development. Can you tell us how is Agile being used for other places? Absolutely. Um, you know, when we talk about the use of Agile and using a Scrum framework to improve performance, it can be used in any functional area. It can be used in any industry. We're using it all across the board. Um, subway systems, rock amplifiers, micro miniature medical devices, pharmaceuticals, um, you know, uh, physical construction, uh, writing my book. I wrote my book using a scrum model. Uh, and in fact, the only reason that uh, the book has actually made it into the marketplace is because I used a scrum model. There was a lot of inspect and adapt that was associated with producing the product that we actually got here at the end. And so, you know, many times people will say things such as, well, I'd never, uh, I'd never use an agile approach to build a bridge. Really, we are. It's called Last Planner, and it's a should, can, will model. And we're using it to dramatically improve the performance of construction teams. I do not care what functional area you are in, finance, IT, human resources. You know, uh, many times people say, human resources, how could you possibly use that? I run the Los Angeles Agile Project Leadership Network here in Los Angeles, and I recently had a woman come in from Orange County and speak about how she used the Scrum model to be able to onboard 500 new employees in 30 days. Now, I would have never thought of using Scrum in that way. And the reason why is I'm not an HR expert. But this is the great thing about Scrum. It's such a flexible framework that people are being able to take that flexible framework, overlay their domain knowledge, and produce results we hadn't even originally envisioned. Mark, why do Agile techniques perform better than other historical project management techniques? The advantages of Agile techniques is they reflect the reality of the modern marketplace. When we talk about historical managerial techniques, many of these techniques have been around for decades, and they reflect the reality of that time. So Waterfall, for example, uh, is a 1940s World War II US military hardware procurement model. And it made perfect sense in the 1940s. And the reason why is our early computers were simple. 28 lines of software code. And so something where I could sit down and establish a defined control that looked into the future was easy to do. When we talk about today's application, we're talking about millions of lines of software code. And so being able to predict, uh, you know, Johnny is going to work on this task for six hours on January 14, 2014. And believing that that's possible, to predict that far into the future with any semblance of accuracy is a fantasy. And so the nice thing about agile techniques is that they are based on empirics. I'm going to establish plans. 
of how I would like things to go. And then I'm going to build a little bit of a product increment, and I'm going to see how that product increment uh, reflects the needs of the customers themselves. You know, the analogy that I often use in why agile techniques are superior is, have you ever read a book and then gone and seen a movie? And, and the characters in the movie are fundamentally different than how you had envisioned them in reading the book. Now, does that mean that the people who produced the movie are wrong? No. Every time you read something, it is open to interpretation. And uh, the nice thing about agile techniques is they allow you to tangibly align your product with the expectations of your actual customers. What advice would you give to companies that are transforming to Agile from other traditional project management styles? The first advice that I would give them is work with professionals. You know, many times people see the opportunities associated with Agile techniques, dramatic improvements as far as time to market acceleration, the opportunity to uh, greatly reduce cost, uh, the increases in quality, and uh, they try to say, um, you know, Johnny, you, you're pretty smart. Uh, go down to Barnes & Noble, buy a book on Agile, um, and see if you can transform the organization. And that's a great start, but that's what it is. It's a start. So the first advice that I would give is work with professionals and start right. You know, one of the things that uh, is a sort of martial art um, you know, uh, mantra that I think is very salient here is they often say, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. And if you start off doing the wrong thing, even if you bring in an organization such as Platinum Edge, it becomes very difficult for us to improve those uh, processes because people have sort of cemented in the wrong way of doing things. And so you've really made our job a lot harder. So the first advice that I would give them is work with professionals, start on the right foot. The other advice that I would give is, and this is somewhat contrary to what you would expect a business person to recommend, start off small. You know, uh, I actually don't recommend that organizations say, well, we're now all going to be agile. I want to start off with a bubble. Give me one project and a transition team and allow me to demonstrate to the organization that agile techniques can, you, can work for that organization. Now, from that, it becomes very easy for us to start scaling from a foundation of success. So it sounds like people and company culture are a significant aspect of an agile organization, perhaps maybe the most significant. Do you agree? I absolutely agree. You know, when we talk to our clients, I often tell them the process of Scrum is simple, right? It's the people that are hard. Um, when I talk about Scrum, I'm talking about three roles, three artifacts, and five activities. That, that is the totality of Scrum. The model of Scrum is actually very simple. The behavioral change associated with doing agile techniques, the behavioral change that is associated with Scrum is actually very difficult. And this is the thing that um, is unique about Platinum Edge. You know, many people that are in this space, they have engineering backgrounds and we have an engineering background. Uh, but what is kind of unique about Platinum Edge is we have a behavioral science background. So how is it that you make transformations that stick? How is it that you align people to the organizational transformation? Those are things that are very difficult to do. Um, and they're things that we do particularly well. And I'm proud of that. So we've seen other methodologies such as Six Sigma come and go. Is Agile really different? I think that it is. Um, you know, I think that one of the problems that many methodologies run into is that they're very prescriptive. You do exactly this, 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 and this. And the world is dynamic. And so as the world evolves, the, the appropriateness of those methodologies changes. And they, they come in and out of favor. Uh, you know, an agile model is really based on the concept of inspect and adapt. And so that doesn't go out of flavor, right? Um, you know, if, if agile is ever replaced by something, the thing that it will be replaced by will emerge from inspecting and adapting based on the trial and error of reality. And so the irony is, is that if Agile is replaced, it will be replaced by using Agile. Uh, and so I don't really see a, a shelf life for the idea of inspect and adapt. I believe that inspect and adapt is universal. At least it will be for my lifetime. It was great speaking with you, Mark. Is there anything else you'd like to say about your book or Agile project management in general? Well, as it relates to the book, I would say uh, go buy it. Uh, you know, I think uh, we're very proud of the product as it produced. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of inspect and adapt, and I think that what we ended up with there is a great field manual for people who are actually trying to do it in the trenches, uh, who are looking for a reference to help them through that transition period. As it relates to agile project management, I think that at this stage, it isn't a question of if. It is a question of when and how smoothly you will transform to these agile techniques. Work with professionals, start out right, 
and let's transform the world of work. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you.